to steal from the Empire? You just walk in like you belong. They're so proud of themselves. So fat and satisfied. They can't imagine that someone like me would ever get inside their house. Der er efterhånden næsten lige så mange Star Wars film og serier, som der er stjerner i galaksen. I need all the heroes I can get. For the greater good. Call it what you will. Let's call it war. Okay, det er en mild overdrivelse, men der er i hvert fald mange af dem. Og i denne uge er der streamingpremiere på endnu en af slagsen, Andor. Og hvis du er en af dem, der føler, at Star Wars er ved at gå lidt i selvsving med genbrug af kendte karakterer og kendemærker, såsom lysvær, stormtroopers og TIE Fighters, så er Andor måske Star Wars-serien for dig. Don't matter what you tell me or tell yourself. You'll ultimately die fighting these bastards. Vi har set seriens fire første afsnit, og vi er virkelig imponeret. Omdrejningspunktet er oprørssoldaten Cassian Andor, som vi først mødte tilbage i 2016's Rogue One, og som igen spilles af en veloplagt Diego Luna. So which is it? I know Big Sass are game. I know you bribe quartermasters to leave valuables on the ships before they come in with scrap, but this isn't that. This isn't something that let pass. No. I went in and got this myself. How? How is that possible? It was it was sealed on the Imperial Naval Base in Stiergard. Look, you got the money, I got the box. What else is there to talk about? I'll give you another thousand credits to tell me how you got it. <laughs> another thousand. Done. How? Andor udfordrer sig i årene op til Rogue One, hvor vores titelhelt langsomt udvikler sig fra en noget gemen tyveknægt til en nøglespiller i rebellernes kamp mod det onde galaktiske imperium. Og både æstetisk og tonemæssigt er serien forfriskende barsk, brutal og snavset, og så historien dejligt tålmodig og vidunderligt karakterdrevet. Og det bør måske ikke komme som den store overraskelse, når nu serien er skrevet og instrueret af Tony Gilroy, manden der skrev de oprindelige Jason Bourne film, som har mange af de samme forser. Og med Andor har Gilroy altså leveret et frisk pust inden for noget gentagelsespræget franchise, som også har været lidt kaloriefattig de seneste år. Og indimellem skal man faktisk næsten minde sig selv om, at man vildt sidder og ser en Star Wars-serie. Og det samme skulle de to Andor-skuespillere, som vi interviewede for nylig, Denise Goff og Carl Soller, som begge brillerer som to af seriens på en gang frygtindgydende og fascinerende skurke. Og mens Soller nok er bedst kendt for sit arbejde på de skrå brædder, så er Goff blandt andet kendt fra det danske krigsdrama Vores mand i Amerika, hvor hun spillede Ulrik Thomsens hustru. I knew something had happened between you a long time ago, but I was foolish enough to believe it was over. It was nothing, and it is over. Og for spillet Witcher 3, hvor hun lagde stemmen til Jennifer. I'd like to be back behind some thick city walls as soon as possible. I mean, I've only been lucky enough to see the first four episodes of Andor, but I was so blown away by what I saw. And I mean, who I've been a better, huge... Who was better, though? Who was better? <laughs> oh, oh my God. I mean, you're both such... I don't know what what your characters will do, like, beyond the first four episodes, but you're both so deliciously complex villains. I love... That's one of the things I loved about this show. Sort of the gray areas with the characters. I mean, it's... Like I said, I've, I've been a huge fan forever, but this is the most grown-up I've ever seen Star Wars been, which doesn't mean that it's not fun, but it just means that it was refreshingly different and thought thought-provoking and bold, which I really appreciated, but... I almost yeah, had to pinch myself. Great. Yeah, but I almost had to pinch myself a couple of times to remind myself that I'm, I'm not watching like a down-to-earth gripping drama about real-world conflicts and and politics. It, this is Star Wars, you know? Did you also like have to remind yourself on set that I'm in Star Wars, I'm in the biggest franchise of all times, so I'm in the world of Jedis and lightsabers? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I was saying to Denise, like... I, yeah. I was filming up into a point where I was so wrapped up in the political espionage thriller, beautiful thing that Tony had written yeah. that I'd kind of, kind of forgotten or I'd kind of gotten used to it. And then there was this moment where I, uh, we were filming in this amazing location that they built mm -hmm. this town and the crowd parted and there was just a line of stormtroopers and I like dropped my coffee all over myself. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm in star Wars. Yeah. Oh my god. 
<laughs> yeah, it <laughs> really is out. something, isn't it? Because the writing is so strong, yeah. like especially when we both come from a pretty strong theater background. So you know what good writing is. It's a rhythm and it's got music to it and it's got beats and like no offense to a lot of telly, but a lot of telly isn't necessarily like that. But when I read these scripts, I was like, oh my God, this is like amazing writing. And it's Star Wars. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> that's like the best of both things, right? Mm. And and I, and exactly like, like, I mean, it was harder for me because it was really obvious I was in Star Wars because I was in that white room a lot, you know, with just so many ISB officers. <laughs> and I thought... Oh, wow. This is, yeah, this is really something because for me, I don't come from that huge, like Star Wars background. So coming into it, I felt like, oh, I'm stepping onto something quite, it sort of feels ancient. You know what I mean? It feels like it's so, Tony calls, um, when he has to make a call about something and he'll call it calling the Vatican, like making yeah. sure there's, cause there's a, a, a system that is in place that we are joining and it feels like kind of feel deeply respectful of that system. Yeah. It's really special. Now, unfortunately, I have like a billion questions, but I'm already being asked to wrap up because I would have loved you spoke about your theater background. I would have loved to hear like your experiences in having to already imagine worlds beyond the stage of uh, of uh, we're going to do Star Wars the musical. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be perfect. Looking forward. That's that's the plan. We're going to call the Vatican and we're going to okay that, and then we're (laughs) going to do it as a stage play. (laughs) People are standing up. They're afraid right now. They're afraid. 